Today in the workshop, we have a Citroen C4 that's in for a coolant leak. So the coolant leak, if you can see, is coming from right down there. You can see where it's pooled on top of the gearbox. There's a plastic housing just under here that we'll have to get access to and we'll have to get that off to, to be replaced. So first thing that we need to do is take off this battery. It'll give us access then to get in from the side. So if we lift up this tab, this can be set to one side. 10 mil on the negative terminal. And I can get tucked down there as well. There's plastic tabs on the side of the ECU. So we can try and put this out of the way. So this clips and then you can lift this section up. When that's up, so with that up, you should be able to push back. There we go. Just push back a piece of plastic that's in the way, hook clamping this down. So with them off, we want to take away the plastic clips that are attached to this plastic box. So we'll be taking this away so that we have access. Three 10 mils. Cable tie is holding this lower section of the wiring loom. Prize this one out. Pipe down here. There's lots of these random little plastic clips holding wiring to the side. Ah, finally, that's a bit more awkward than it should have been. So now we've got a clearer view of what's going on. You see where it started to pool down here. There's lots of staining from where the coolant's been leaking, especially here. You can see on this seam where the thermostat actually lives. Yeah, it's just really wet and it's breaking out of this seam because again, they've decided to make all of these housings out of plastic and they just go brittle over time and start to leak. So in order to get this off, we need to take off all the electrics, all of the coolant pipes that go to it. And there's little sensors, temperature sensors and things like that that need to be disconnected. So let's start with some of the coolant pipes. This one's being a little tight, just help guide it off. And any residue that's still in the system will start to leak out. So just be aware of that. Might be easier actually because there's some cooling pipes down here. If we take off this air pipe. Take these electrical connectors off. This one is a bit more awkward, so you can't see it from up top. You might have to undo the actual housing. There's four 10 mils that hold this on. When it's away, you can turn it to one side and it should be easier to see. But, uh, let's get this coolant pipe off. Another clip down in here. I'm not gonna snip this clip, it's just to just try and lever it out of the hole. It's not gonna be just guided up and above it. Okay, and this pipe is released. So that's loose there. We should be able to remove it now. This pipe is stuck on, but there's a little bit of too much flex in this plastic housing that it's connected to, so. I think I'm going to want to take this out first before I can see what needs to be either swapped over because this piece is not on the new part. 
Okay, so there's four eighth mils, sorry, not ten. This bottom one is very hard to see. So there's an element of just having the feel for it. You kind of get your fingers on that so you can feel it. So this one's a little bit better. Here's that one. One more to go, which is up the top here. I left the one of the easier ones until last, just to make sure that when I'm in there, this doesn't drop over it, make it more awkward to remove those bolts. But this is probably gonna be stuck to the side of the block. Okay, hey, there's that one. We'll see how much wiggle room we have now. And it says another eight mil just here. There's another part of the wiring room, which is clipped to the top of this, which is annoying. Now that, that's off. Because so what we have to do is that this pipe here is actually a hard pipe that goes and sits in here with, an, uh, with a rubber o-ring. So we can't just prise that out. This housing has to go away from it. Otherwise we'll have to take off everything that that's connected to as well. And we don't want to do that. Well, it does seem my luck lately that everything just wants to be awkward. It does seem to be coming. Come on. There's a pipe on a little clip on the top. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera. Now that this is out, we just need to disconnect this electrical connector. And there we are, it's out. It was a lot more awkward than it needed to be to come out, but yeah, we can see now when it's off, where it fails is just in this seam here. Yeah, just being made out of plastic makes it brittle, you know, going hot and cold, hot and cold all the time and then they just tend to crack. It's just a bad design that they make these housings out of plastic. We can see on the new part, actually, that they've just slightly altered it. So it looks like instead of there just being a plastic seam all the way around, that there's, hence I can see a rubber gasket on the inside of that. So it's not just relying on like the plastic weld to be held on around it. There is a rubber seal in there as well. So hopefully this will last longer as well. Yeah, let's get it fitted. So you can see all the staining with that housing out of the way. What we want to do now is just give this a wipe down, make sure it's nice and dry, and that there's not any residue from the old seal that can cause issues with the new part making a seal, because we don't want any more leaks. So what I like to do here is just put a little bit of grease on this O-ring because this can be quite stiff to go back in place because we're going to be just pushing against this pipe because of how it's fitted around the back I want this to go nice and easy around so just a light film of grease so now with a new unit we can just try to gently guide it take our 10 mil and just try to gently put it in our eight mil sorry you can try and catch these by hand you always want to catch it by hand first because if you just chuck a ratchet on it you run the risk of 
cross threading and you don't want to have to happen. You don't want to final tighten these until all of the bolts are in. Oh, where's my spanner gone? There it is. To up this 8mm. It's going to be quite fiddly. Uh, so you want to make sure these clips are all back on the pipes before you feed them back through. They should just push straight on. Remember these have grooves on them so they can only go back on in one place really. On the electrical connectors. So when you're happy everything's tight, all the pipes are on, all the clips are back in place, that everything's in the right position, you can put the electrical connector back in place on here. Make sure that it clicks into place. And you want to make sure that any clips for the wiring go back into where they were as well. So you can put this in there. So we're going to fill this with coolant and because there's a bleed nipple on the top part of that new housing that we've uh, just fitted We can open that and start bleeding the coolant through now that all the pipes are on So just fill this to the brim just from up top. You'll be able to see the bleed nipple oh, It's quite tight should be able to get it from there Wait for that to push the air through. So what you want to do is wait for the bubbles to stop and then once you've got a steady flow, oh, once you've got a steady flow like that, carefully try and put the cover or the cap back on. So you've got that bleed nipple there, further on in the system, back here, on this cooling pipe there where my finger is. Be able to see, I'll try and get a light on that. So, just here is another bleed nipple, and you want to do the same thing there. So, we'll have to top up the coolant again and do the same thing there. Take that off and let all the air out so that this can be awkward. And these can be really tight, but again, be careful because they're plastic. So, again, it's bubbling out now. I'm just waiting for that flow to go nice and steady. Leave it a couple of seconds just to make sure there's no more bubbles. You know what? And then put the cap back on. Because of the pressure of the flow coming out, it's very easy to drop these caps. And obviously you want to put this cap back on before the coolant has a chance to come out completely. And the coolant's at a decent level now. Now that I'm happy with all of that and everything seems bled, we'll put some of the air pipes back together, put the battery back in place, and then we'll road test it. I'm going to dry up any excess. Okay, so now everything's back together. The coolant level is correct. We bled up the coolant system and don't forget to reconnect all of the clips that go around the battery tray. Make sure they're all clicked back into position. Now the only thing that we have to do is go on road test, make sure it gets up to temperature and that the fan cuts in because you always want to check that the fan cuts in so we can regulate the temperature properly. So we've just come back from road test. Everything's all okay. The customer has picked up the car. Again, when you've got those bleed nipples in certain areas or certain parts of the system, you can be a lot more confident that you're getting rid of any airlocks. When you've got a car that doesn't have that, you've got to make sure that you leave the car overnight, that you allow it to cool down, and that you have to also make sure that the fan cuts in so it can regulate that temperature properly. But 
For now, guys, that's it for this video. I hope this has helped you. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you could please hit that subscribe button, it does mean a lot and it does help us continue to make videos like this one. Cheers.